My name is Eva Kisztyörgy, I'm a freelance travel writer and I have a blog Travelina. I collect uh, UNESCO sites and Bulgaria has nine of them. I came here to do a road trip to visit all nine as well as some famous and lesser known sites. I will travel around for 11 days, follow me and I'll show you around. Before you hit the road, remember you have to have a sticker called Vinyat Kanyon Kan. It's compulsory, not only on the highways, but uh, basically on every single road. We are in the ancient town of Pesebar, in the peninsula of the Black Sea. The town has over 3,000 years of history. It was founded at the second millennium BC as a Thracian settlement. Later it became a Greek colony and an important trading center. The town fell under the Roman rule in 71 BC and it became one of the most important strongholds of the Byzantine Empire. There are still monuments from this period, for example this bathhouse. Nesebar is famous for its medieval churches. There are about 80 of them. They are mostly ruined, but they still make the town postcard perfect. The characteristics of the Nesebar style are the horizontal strips of white stone and red brick. The facades are decorated with green ceramic tiles. One of the most uh, significant churches is the Sveti Stefan. You have to pay a uh, 6 lira entrance fee and it seems it's a bit too much for the tourists because there is absolutely no one besides me. I find this uh, city very relaxing because there are hardly any tourists. Actually, I so far I haven't seen anybody with a selfie stick and I'm here for 24 hours. The city is full with Roman ruins. Uh, for example, this is the Odeon right behind me. Vlotiv has a really cool pedestrian street full with shops. It's very different than in Nesebar because in Nesebar all the shops were souvenir stores geared towards tourists but uh, here the shops are used by locals and uh, it's just very nice and chilling to walk around. One has to look up continuously to the houses because they are really lovely. Uh, they are all crumbling and old and they are not renovated but uh, they still look very very beautiful. This is where I had lunch. It's a very nice little self-service restaurant and it's uh, really good if you keep a protein diet because uh, there's lots of grilled meat, grilled fish and uh, veggies. They put a lot of deals on the vegetables and the zucchini and aubergine and uh, I quite like it. Theatre. It could house uh, five to seven thousand people. Currently it's under renovation and uh, with the new seats installed they can sit about 2,400 people. They still hold large-scale events such as operas, theatre performances and concerts. There are a few houses in the old town which belong to very rich merchants. They can also be visited inside and they are totally splendid. Uh, founded over a thousand years ago, uh, 
but uh, later it was restored. This is the cathedral of uh, Virgin Mary, which has an icon. It's supposed to make wonders, so it attracts a lot of pilgrims. The Panorama mural is the largest scenic mural on the Balkan Peninsula and uh, it represents the history of the Bachkovo Monastery. It was painted in 1846 and uh, you couldn't see that it's 150 years old, it looks so fresh. The painter used the copper print as a sample and he prepared all the paints himself after some old recipes. Shirokaloka, which is a small village, less than 600 people in the Rodopi mountains. It was founded in the 17th century by Bulgarians fleeing from Islam. The village, famous for its architecture, there are two-story houses with the cellars to hide. The Shirokaloka is known not only for its lovely houses, but also because they have a special backpipe. If you want to hear that, you should come on the first Sunday of March, then they hold one of the most famous uh, celebrations in the country. People dress up in uh, traditional costumes, they dress like monsters, and they wear swords, and they dance around the village to drive the evils out of the homes. National Park earned its UNESCO status because there are 1,300 different species of plants. It's especially noted for its large number of moss species and algae. but uh, I guess casual visitors like you and me do not really get excited about these. However, this is uh, the country's largest national park, it's permanently open and it's free. staying in Balansko, uh, which is a traditional ski resort. I have a room at the Kampinski Hotel, which is right at the foot of this uh, ski lift, so it's very, very convenient. We are in the monastery of Rila, which is Bulgaria's largest and most sacred Orthodox shrine. It was founded in 927 by a hermit monk, Ivan of Rila, a few kilometers from here, and moved to its current location in the 14th century. Although it has been sacked several times and nearly burned to the ground in 1833, it has been saved and restored. It draws about a million of religious uh, pilgrims and curious tourists each year. Within the monastery walls, there are four levels of colorful balconies with cells, storeroom and kitchen. peaceful suburb of uh, Sofia, only about 8 kilometers from the center. Uh, behind me is the Boyana Church, which is a UNESCO site, and uh, it became very famous because uh, of its frescoes from the 13th century. It's a very good example why I like to hunt for UNESCO sites, because uh, not many people will come here otherwise. Uh, compared to Rila, where there are a million visitors each year, only about 50,000 uh, visit this church. And I think it's really, really gorgeous inside. Uh, the frescoes are very rare examples from that period and uh, they are passive pieces of uh, Bulgarian medieval art. It's not possible to take pictures or videos but I convinced the guide so I can show you inside.
a large Frisian necropolis. It's situated in a region that, where more than a thousand tombs of kings and Frisian aristocracy can be found. It dates back to the 4th century BC, but it was discovered only in 1944 during a bomb shelter construction. To preserve the paintings, the tomb is not open to the public. However, there is a full-size replica nearby which can be visited. The Devatashka cave, which is not in the Lonely Planet, so there is no wonder there is hardly anybody here. We are at Ivanovo, which is a, another World Heritage Site here in Bulgaria. It's a group of monolithic churches, chapels and caves hewn out of solid rock and it's completely different from other monastery complexes in the country. The caves in the region have been uh, inhabited by monks from the 1320s to the 17th century. At the peak of the complex there were about 40 temples and 300 premises on this site. The monastery complex owes much to its fame to its 13th and 14th century frescoes. They are sort of wonderful example of Bulgarian medieval art. They are preserved in five of the churches, but only one can be visited. The original entrance of the church was uh, where the balcony is located right now. I have no idea how they climbed up to here. Srebarna Nature Reserve, which is uh, located at the west bank of the Danube River, and it comprises Lake Srebarna and its surroundings. It's a wetland habitat for about 180 bird species, both uh, migrating and breeding. The most important here is the Dalmatian pelican, because it's one of the very rare breeding sites for them. Most of the area is a strict reserve, which is close to visitors. However, there is a visitor station containing uh, an exhibition of stuffed birds, and there is a terrace with a reasonable view over the marshes. Unfortunately, the pelicans left for this year already early July. The best time to come is uh, April, May or maybe June. That's when you can see them. The rest of the year, you can only watch a movie at the visitor center. If you are here in April, you can also watch the little babies through a webcam in the visitor center. Although they provide binoculars, they are not that strong, so it's better to see the little ones through the camera. We are at Madara, uh, and that is the Madara Rider, which is a like rock reef carved on the Madeira Plateau in northeastern Bulgaria. The carving shows a majestic horseman 23 meters above the ground level on an almost vertical 100 meter high cliff. The horseman is thrusting a spear into a lion lying at the horse feet and the dog runs after the horseman. The monument is dated back to 710 
and it's attributed to the ancient Bulgars, a nomadic tribe of warriors who settled in northeastern Bulgaria at the end of the 7th century, and after merging with the local Slavs, they gave origin to the modern Bulgarians. What's amazing about this site is the location of the carving. How did the artists reach that site so high above the ground 1,400 years ago? Nobody knows. We are at the fresh and tomb of Shveshtari, which is from the 1st century BC, but it was only discovered in 1982. It's a very unique structure. It has uh, half female and half plant figures as an architectural support. It's different from the fresh and tomb of Kazanlat that we have seen earlier, because it's a subterranean uh, tomb and not a building with a cupola. The archaeologists discovered a number of treasures just recently in 2012 golden buttons, golden ring, and little female figures in 150 tons in this area. That was our last UNESCO site, so we completed our little journey. If you liked our trip, follow me on Facebook and YouTube, and I will take you to some new adventures.